A hypergolic propellant combination used in a rocket engine is one whose components spontaneously ignite when they come into contact with each other. The two propellant components usually consist of a fuel and an oxidizer. The main advantages of hypergolic propellants are that they can be stored as liquids at room temperature and that engines which are powered by them are easy to ignite reliably and repeatedly. Although commonly used, hypergolic propellants are difficult to handle due to their extreme toxicity and or corrosiveness. In contemporary usage, the terms hypergol or hypergolic propellant usually mean the most common such propellant combination, dinitrogen tetroxide plus hydrazine and or its relatives monomethylhydrazine and unsymmetrical dimethylhydrazine. History Soviet rocket engine researcher Valentin Glushko experimented with hypergolic fuel as early as 1931. It was initially used for chemical ignition of engines, starting kerosene, nitric acid engines with an initial charge of phosphorus dissolved in carbon disulfide. Starting in 1935, Professor O. Lutz of the German Aeronautical Institute experimented with over 1,000 self-igniting propellants. He assisted the Walter Company with the development of sea stoff which ignited with concentrated hydrogen peroxide. BMW developed engines burning a hypergolic mix of nitric acid with various combinations of amines, xylidines and anilines. Hypergolic propellants were discovered independently, for the third time, in the U.S. by GALCIT and Navy Annapolis researchers in 1940. They developed engines powered by aniline and nitric acid. Robert Goddard, Reaction Motors, and Curtis Wright worked on aniline, nitric acid engines in the early 1940s, for small missiles and jet-assisted takeoff In Germany from the mid-1930s through World War II, rocket propellants were broadly classed as monergols, hypergols, non-hypergols and lithergols. The ending ergol is a combination of Greek ergon or work, and Latin oleum or oil, later influenced by the chemical suffix ol from alcohol. Monergols were monopropellants, while non-hypergols were bipropellants which required external ignition, and lithergols were solid, liquid hybrids. Hypergolic propellants or at least hypergolic ignition were far less prone to hard starts than electric or pyrotechnic ignition. The hypergole terminology was coined by Dr. Wolfgang Nagareth, at the Technical University of Brunswick, Germany. The only rocket-powered fighter ever deployed was the Messerschmitt Mi-163B comet. The comet had a HWK 109-509 a rocket motor which consumed methanol, hydrazine as fuel and high test peroxide as oxidizer. The hypergolic rocket motor had the advantage of fast climb and quick hitting tactics at the cost of being very volatile and capable of exploding with any degree of inattention. Other proposed combat rocket fighters like the Heinkel Julia and reconnaissance aircraft like the DFS-228 were meant to use the Walter 509 series of rocket motors, but besides the Mi-163, only the Bachamba 349 Natter vertical launch expendable fighter was ever flight tested with the Walter rocket propulsion system as its primary sustaining thrust system for military military purpose aircraft. The earliest ballistic missiles, such as the Soviet R-7 that launched Sputnik 1 and the U.S. Atlas and Titan 1, used kerosene and liquid oxygen. 
Although they are preferred in space launchers, the difficulties of storing a cryogen-like liquid oxygen in a missile that had to be kept launch ready for months or years at a time led to a switch to hypergolic propellants in the U.S. Titan II and in most Soviet ICBMs such as the R-36. But the difficulties of such corrosive and toxic materials, including leaks and explosions in Titan II silos, led to their near-universal replacement with solid fuel boosters, first in Western submarine-launched ballistic missiles and then in land-based U.S. and Soviet ICBMs. The Apollo lunar module, used in the moon landings, employed hypergolic fuels in both the descent and ascent rocket engines. The trend among Western space launch agencies is away from large hypergolic rocket engines and toward hydrogen, oxygen engines with higher performance. Ariane 1 through 4, with their hypergolic first and second stages and optional hypergolic boosters on the Ariane 3 and 4 have been retired and replaced with the Ariane 5, which uses a first stage fueled by liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. The Titan II, III and IV, with their hypergolic first and second stages, have also been retired. Hypergolic rockets are still widely used in upper stages when multiple burn coast periods are required. Topic. Characteristics Advantages Hypergolically fueled rocket engines are usually simple and reliable because they need no ignition system. Although larger hypergolic engines in some launch vehicles use turbopumps, most hypergolic engines are pressure-fed. A gas, usually helium, is fed to the propellant tanks under pressure through a series of check and safety valves. The propellants in turn flow through control valves into the combustion chamber, there, their instant contact ignition prevents a mixture of unreacted propellants from accumulating and then igniting in a potentially catastrophic hard start. The most common hypergolic fuels, hydrazine, monomethylhydrazine and unsymmetrical dimethylhydrazine, and oxidizer, nitrogen tetroxide, are all liquid at ordinary temperatures and pressures. They are therefore sometimes called storable liquid propellants. They are suitable for use in spacecraft missions lasting many years. The cryogenity of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen limits their practical use to space launch vehicles where they need to be stored only briefly. Because hypergolic rockets do not need an ignition system, they can fire any number of times by simply opening and closing the propellant valves until the propellants are exhausted and are therefore uniquely suited for spacecraft maneuvering and well suited, though not uniquely so, as upper stages of such space launchers as the Delta II and Ariane 5, which must perform more than one burn. Restartable non-hypergolic rocket engines nevertheless exist, notably the cryogenic oxygen, hydrogen RL-10 on the Centaur and the J-2 on the Saturn V. The RP-1, LOX Merlin on the Falcon 9 can also be restarted. <laughs> Disadvantages Relative to their mass, traditional hypergolic propellants are less energetic than such cryogenic propellant combinations as liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen or liquid methane, liquid oxygen. A launch vehicle that uses hypergolic propellant must therefore carry a greater mass of fuel than one that uses these cryogenic fuels. The corrosivity, toxicity, and carcinogenicity of traditional hypergolics necessitate expensive safety precautions. <laughs> Hypergolic combinations <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Common. Arizine 50 plus nitrogen tetroxide (NTO), widely used in historical American rockets, including the Titan II, all engines in the Apollo lunar module, and the service propulsion system in the Apollo service module. Arizine 50 is a mixture of 50% UDMH and 50% straight hydrazine (N2H4). Unsymmetrical dimethylhydrazine UDMH plus nitrogen tetroxide NTO frequently used by Roscosmos, such as in the Proton rocket family, and supplied by them to France for the Ariane 1 first and second stages replaced with A25, ISRO PSLV second stage. Monomethylhydrazine MMH plus nitrogen tetroxide NTO smaller engines and reaction control thrusters, Apollo Command Module Reaction Control System, Space Shuttle Ohms and RCS, Ariane 5 EPS, Draco thrusters used by the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. Tonka TGO2, approximately 50% triethylamine and 50% xylidine, typically oxidized with nitric acid or its anhydrous nitric oxide derivatives, AK2X group in the Soviet Union, e.g. AK2OF 80% HNO3 20% N2O4 with inhibitor. Triethylborane, triethylaluminium TTEB, plus liquid oxygen, used during the ignition process of some rocket engines that use liquid oxygen, used by the SpaceX Merlin engine family and Rocketdyne F1. <laughs> Less common and obsolete Hydrazine plus nitric acid toxic but stable Aniline plus nitric acid unstable explosive used in the WAC corporal Aniline plus hydrogen peroxide dust sensitive explosive Furfuryl alcohol plus IRFNA or white fuming nitric acid Turpentine plus IRFNA flown in French diamond a first stage UDMH plus IRFNA, MGM-52 Lance missile system T-STOF stabilized greater than 80% peroxide plus C-STOF methanol, hydrazine, water, catalyst Messerschmitt Mi-163 World War II German rocket fighter aircraft, for its Walter 109-509A engine Kerosene plus high test peroxide plus catalyst Gamma, with the peroxide first decomposed by a catalyst Cold hydrogen peroxide and kerosene are not hypergolic, but concentrated hydrogen peroxide referred to as high test peroxide or HTP run over a catalyst produces free oxygen and steam at over 700 degrees Celsius 1300 degrees Fahrenheit which is hypergolic with kerosene. Tetramethylethylenediamine plus IRFNA, a less toxic and non-mutagenic alternative to hydrazine and its derivatives. Pentaborane plus nitrogen tetroxide, pentaborane a so-called ZIP fuel, was used in combination with nitrogen tetroxide by the Soviet RD-270M rocket engine. Topic. Related technology Although not hypergolic in the strict sense but rather pyrophoric, triethylborane, which ignites spontaneously in the presence of air, was used for engine starts in the SR-71 Blackbird, the F-1 engines used in the Saturn V rocket, and the Merlin engines used in the SpaceX Falcon 9 rockets equals equals notes